Hastings, this is Hastings. All change on the train at platform one, please. All change. Four stations to Brighton, cross the platform to platform two. Hastings, this is Hastings. Hastings Times, please. About six weeks ago, Anne went off to the old town to get a story for the Hastings Times. It was the signal for the big lifeboat to put to sea. Stan West was there with his grandson, Billy. Stan was a fisherman. He was also one of the lifeboatmen. Down there. Right. Thanks. What is it, Stan? Uh, another motorboat in trouble, I expect. People buy these boats, but they don't know enough about the sea to be safe in them. Next thing you know, they're in a mess, and we have to go and fish them out. big lifeboat went off to save a motorboat. Well, they're off. Yep. Your summer holidays must nearly be over now, Billy. Yeah, Grandad will soon be seeing the back of me. <laughs> oh, Anne. What do you make of this? I found it this morning. Do you think the words are being cut out to make a message? I don't know, Billy. I read a story about people who sent a message that way. But they didn't want anyone to know who sent it. But those words may not make a message. How can I find out which words are being cut out? Well, put this page over another copy of the same page, then you'll find out. Well, where can I get another copy? The Hastings Times. So Billy got another copy of the newspaper. He put his page on top of it. Then he saw which words had been cut out. cut out the same words. He 
worked out the message. We know you have the king's dragon. What did the message mean? Who knew? Who had the king's dragon? And what was it? Anne was hard at work on her copy when I called her in to see me. Anne, could you pop in a moment, please? Ah, oh, thanks. And some archaeologists have started a new dig up at the castle. I want you to write about it for the children's page. But that's your page. I know I write the children's page, but I haven't time to do this story. You know the sort of thing. What is archaeology? How can it help us find out about the past? What sort of thing do archaeologists dig up? Oh, and by the way, ask why they stopped the dig up battle. Right. At about the same time, a tall man, who was a stranger to Hastings, was out walking by the sea. He was smoking a pipe. The tall man went up to Stanworth's fishing boat, the King Harold. Stan and Billy were hard at work. Hey, Yemen, look what the tide's washed up. Morning. Morning. My name's Carter. I'm looking for the Hastings Motorboat Club. Go past the net huts, yeah. past the fisherman's museum. It's on the left. Then Billy saw a car taking a big motorboat past the net huts. Hey, look at that. I bet it can go. Yes. It can. It's mine. <laughs> went up to the castle. The archaeologists were hard at work, digging. Anne went over to them. Good morning. Good morning. I'm from the Hastings Times. I want to write about archaeology and about your dig for our children's page. I see. Well, uh... This is Miss Wood from the Museum of Archaeology. And uh, my name's Clive Manning. And we've a lot of work to do. You, uh, you mustn't mind her. You see, her work is very important to her. I understand. But you're an archaeologist too. You can tell me. Why do you dig? Oh, to find out about the past. Sometimes we find things. What sort of things? Oh. Things people had in their houses long ago. Things they used in their work. Things their children had. When archaeologists dig something up, they try to find out what it was used for and how old it is. Do you know how old this castle is? Well, it was begun after the Battle of Hastings in 1066. It's funny how we call it the Battle of Hastings. In fact, it took place some miles away. I know. At battle. Yeah. That's why the town's called Battle. We, uh, we had an important dig there some time ago. Why did you stop digging at Battle? Because I wanted to dig here. Understand? Anne 
Anne left the castle. Why had Miss Wood been so frightened by her questions? Anne went to her car. Uh, uh, wait a minute. I worked out that newspaper message. What did it say? We know you have the king's dragon. What do you make of it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a reporter, not a detective, you know. I could show you where I found it if you like. I think it could be important. Oh, all right then, Billy. Show me where you found it. She didn't think the message was very important, but she liked Billy. They went to the house. The house looked empty, but the door was open. The newspaper came from in there. There was someone inside that house. Inside the house, Billy found another newspaper. There were rings round some of the words. Look, the words haven't been cut out yet. Oh, it's probably some kid's game. Or a joke. I don't think it's a joke. And it isn't kids. I'm sure I saw a man in here. There was a sound outside. Someone was behind the door. He got away on a bus, but I got this. And I'd know him if I saw him again. Good. Look, can I have the message you worked out? And all the other things? Yeah, here you are. You still think it's a joke? No, I don't. 
Look, I've got to go to the flower show now, but I'll have a good look at these when I get back to the office. And I'd better get back to the boat. Grandad's bound to find something for me to do. So Billy began to go back to his granddad's boat. He was near the caves Sorry. when he saw Miss Wood. Go away. Go away. At the Hastings Motorboat Club, Mr. Carter was called to the phone. Hello? A reporter. Are you sure? Anne went to the flower show to get a story for the Hastings Times. At the flower show, she was asking questions. Hello. Hello again. Well, these yours? Yes. They oh, are. Oh, second prize. Yes, I did well to get second. Yes. Mr. Day was there. Hello there. Hello. Mr. Day worked at the Hastings Museum. He was the curator. Here we are. Are they wonderful? Oh, Quite wonderful. Look at these. Then Anne saw Clive Manning. Oh, Mr. Manning. Mr. Manning. Mr. Day, this is Clive Manning. He's working at the new dig-up at the castle. This is Mr. Day. He's the curator of the Hastings Museum. How do you do? How do you do? Weren't you on the dig at battle with that Miss... Um... Miss Wood. Yes, I was. Yes, I thought I'd seen you before. Is Miss Wood connected with the new dig? Uh, she's in charge. It's uh, her dig. Who is it? Funny woman. I found her rather difficult to talk to. Tell me... Why did she stop digging at battle? I don't know. It's uh, a bit of a mystery, really. You better ask Miss Wood. No, no, I won't, if you don't mind. <laughs> Anne wanted to get back to the Hastings Times. She wanted to work out the new message which she and Billy had found. She put the newspaper on her desk then she wrote down the words with the rings around them. Anne started to work out the message. What did it mean? Who was running out of time? Then she looked at the first message. You know you have the king's dragon. Anne made up her mind. She was going to take the two messages to the police station. I'm going to the police station. If anybody wants me, tell them I won't be long. Okay, fine. Not start. Oh dear. Won't it start? No. Shall I fix it for you? Thank you, no. I could do it myself. Anne didn't see Mr. Carter take the messages from her car. Sure you don't need a man's help? I'm perfectly able to fix my own car. I'm 
said that. She could not go to the police station without them. She had nothing to show the police. She had no proof that she'd found anything at all. But from now on, she would keep an eye open for a tall man smoking a pipe. Morning, Stan. Morning, Billy boy. Morning, Mr. Carter. I say, you mind giving me a hand to get my boat launched? Come on, Dad. That's fine. Just put her on the way over there. That's it. I'll be. I'll be there. Lovely. Thank you so much. Everyone in Hastings is so very helpful, you know. You're welcome. I wish I had a boat like that, Grandad. You call that thing a boat, young'un? I'd rather have the King Harold any day. Second message? Yeah, it said you're running out of time. Uh, we'll be running out of time too if we don't get to sea soon, young'un. Well, then the messages were stolen from a car. Stolen? Who by? A tall man who smokes a pipe. Tall man who smokes a pipe? That could be Mr. Carter, couldn't it, Billy? Sounds like him, all right. Who's Mr. Carter? He's come down to Hastings to do some fishing. He's got a big new motorboat. Well, he's out there now, fishing. But why would he want to steal those messages? I don't know. It would help if we knew what the King's Dragon was. The King's Dragon? That sounds like a pub, don't it? I don't think it's a pub, Stan. I could ask the other fishermen if you like. No, thanks, Billy. I don't want to say anything about it yet. But I would like you to keep an eye on this Mr Carter. See what you can find out about it. OK. <laughs> To the library to see if she could find out anything about the king's dragon. She couldn't find anything in the books, but someone must know what it was. At the castle, Miss Wood stopped digging. She went back to her cottage in the old town. Someone had been there. Her things were all over the room. Someone had been looking for something. We will stop at nothing. You have until tomorrow. We will stop at nothing. You have until tomorrow. Then Clive Manning came into the cottage. Who did this? I don't know. The door was open when I came back. Was anything being stolen? I don't think so. I haven't had time to look yet. Well, you must go to the police. Oh, no. Not the police. What's that? Nothing. Look, if... 
if you're in some sort of danger, why not tell me? I'll help if I can. I'm not in any danger. And I don't want any help. Well, we'd better find out what's missing, then. All right. If you want to help me, get a taxi here tomorrow morning to take me to the station. I'm going to London. What about the dig? Do you want me to carry on with it? Oh, yes, yes, but do stop asking questions. Now, get that taxi here in good time. There's a train at 10 tomorrow morning. I want to be on it. Right. You'll be on it. Thanks. Mr. Carter came back from his fishing. Billy was keeping an eye on him. Mr. Carter. Oh, yes, very good day, Billy boy. Hope to do even better tomorrow. Billy did his best to follow Mr. Carter. But Mr. Carter gave him the slip. day, Anne couldn't stop thinking about the king's dragon. So at last she came to see me. Come in. Can I have a word with you a moment, Mr. Dunbar? Yes, if it really is only a moment. I think I'm onto a big story. Oh, yes. There's a boy in Hastings called Billy West. He's here on holiday with his granddad, Stan West. Yes, I know Stan West. He's a fisherman and one of the lifeboatmen. Yes, that's right. Well, I've got to know Billy quite well. And... Stick to the point. Well, to cut a long story short, Billy and I found some messages. They were made up of words cut out of the newspaper. Yes, I know the sort of thing. Now, what were the messages? One of them said, 
you are running out of time. And the other said, we know you have the king's dragon. It sounds like a pub. It's not a pub. Look at it. Might just have been kids or someone having a joke. Or can I see the messages? They were stolen from my car. Who by? I think a tall man who smokes a pipe took them. Well, there are lots of tall men who smoke pipes in Hastings. Did you see him take the messages? Well, no. I think he did something to my car because it wouldn't start. I think he took the messages while I was getting it to go. You think he took them? You think he did something to your car? And this story is as full of holes as a fisherman's net. But, Mr Dunbar... As editor of this newspaper, I want facts. Not a lot of maybes. But... Facts, Anne. Now, go to the museum. Ask Mr Day about his Battle of Hastings exhibition. I want copy, not talk. I knew that Anne was upset. But she was a good reporter and she got on with her job. She was about to go off in her car when Billy came running up. Have you found out what the King's Dragon is? No, but I'm going to. Have you been keeping an eye on Mr Carter? Yes, I followed him yesterday. But I think he knows, because he gave me the slip. Never mind. Stay with him. See you later. It was time for Miss Wood to go to the station. What was she running away from? Was she in danger? The taxi took her to Hastings Station. Very kind of you, but... Uh, Not at all. Glad to help. Are you catching the London train? Yes. So am I. I have to get my ticket. Look, I can manage those very well. No, really. no trouble at all. London, please. Return, please. At the museum, Anne looked for Mr. Day, the curator who had talked to her at the flower show. He was working in the big exhibition room. Ah, Miss Mills, we meet again. Come in, come in. Hello, Mr. Day. Well, we're still in a bit of a mess. As you see, it's a lot of work to open an exhibition. Now, why are you putting on this exhibition? Well, you see, Many people come to Hastings and hope to see things from the battle. But very little has ever been found. We think we know a lot about it, but we haven't many facts. As Mr Dunbar says, just a lot of maybes. Yes, history has many of those. Is that why Miss Wood was digging up battle? To find some facts? Yes, that's right. I couldn't get on with her, you know. Difficult to talk to. To be perfectly honest. I don't like her very much. What was I saying? Facts. Oh, yes. Now, archaeologists dig things up. And things. Are facts. I like books. Old books. Old stories. The older the better. Now, after the Battle of Hastings, People must have wanted to write about it. They probably talked to people who had been in the battle. Well, like these two chaps here, and those over there. Ask them a lot of questions. Just like a reporter. Yes, just like a reporter. Of course, I'm not sure that everyone kept to the facts all the time. Yes, I know what you mean. Now, in this exhibition, we try to tell the story of the battle. Try to keep to the facts. Suddenly, Anne stopped. 
She looked at something in the exhibition. She looked at it for a long time. Mr. Day, what is this? Um, well, now that is King Harold, and that is the King's Dragon Banner. What did you say? The King's Dragon Banner. King's Dragon Banner? Yes. The King's Dragon! Anne was sure that she was onto something important. Perhaps Mr. Day knew more about the King's Dragon. Dragon was a banner. Yes. Why are you so interested in it? It's to do with a story I'm working on. A story? I've heard of something called the King's Dragon, and I've been trying to find out what it is. But a banner? No, that's not quite right somehow. Mr. Day, is there anything else the King's Dragon could be? Anything at all. Now, that does ring a bell. The King's Dragon... Now, I remember, there is something. Now, just a second, Miss Moore. Just a second. Now, sit there. Yes, this is the one. Here we are. Here it is. Now then, here is the story. Now, mind you, it is only a story, but it is a story that not many people have heard about. Go on. Well, long ago, people made lots of things from gold. They made arm rings of gold. This story tells of the gold arm ring worn by King Harold. It was made like a dragon. And it says here that people called it the King's Dragon. An arm ring? Yes. What's that? Something rather like a big bracelet. Let me show you. There we are. Now we'll twist it around here. There. They probably wore them like that. Some of these arm rings were very big, but I'm sure that the king's dragon arm ring was the biggest of the lot. So the king's dragon was a gold arm ring? Yes, perhaps. But it's never been found? No, it's just a story. Not a fact. If an archaeologist dug it up, it would be a fact. Ah. If it was dug up, it would be a very important fact. What a find. The gold arm ring worn by King Harold at the Battle of Hastings. The King's Dragon. Anne was thinking hard. Miss Wood was an archaeologist. Did she know anything about the dragon arm ring? Was it just a story? Or had Miss Wood found it? The battle dig. I uh, thank you, Mr. Day. I uh, thank you very much indeed. Anne knew that she must talk to Miss Wood. She had a lot of questions to ask her. Carter got out of a taxi at Miss Wood's cottage in the old town. 
Clive Manning opened the door. Well, Uncle, how'd it go? Very well, Clive, my boy. In fact, you could say that the King's Dragon is in the bag. Mr. Carter and Clive took Miss Wood's bags into the cottage. They're locked. Clive got them open. here. Then where is it? Well, she must still have it on her. No, I'm sure she hasn't. It must still be here. But I searched the place yesterday. You know I did. I hunted everywhere for it. I think you'd better look again, Clive. Look. She won't go to the police. She's too frightened. His messages of yours have seen to that. All right. But she might come back here. Good. I hope she does, because then we'll make her tell us where the arm ring is. I am going to have the king's dragon. I'm going to get it somehow. Why did I ever tell you about it? Because you're greedy, Clive. Everyone is greedy. You were greedy when you found out that Miss Wood had the arm ring and I said I would pay you well for it. I am greedy because I can sell it to a very rich man who is just as greedy as I am. Greedy for a gold arm ring. Greedy for the king's dragon. Anne went up to the castle. She should have gone back to the Hastings Times, but she wanted to talk to Miss Wood. If Miss Wood had found the King's Dragon, the newspaper messages must have been for her. Miss Wood could be in danger. Anne could not find Miss Wood at the castle. Where's Anne? Isn't she back yet? No. She's off writing another of fairy stories, I suppose. Uh, get me the museum, would you, Jane? Yes, this is the editor, Hastings Times. She has a cottage in the old town, uh, I think. Uh, Stan West would know. He found it for her. Thanks. Down by the boats, Stan West was looking for his grandson. Billy was taking a good look at Carter's boat. Then he listened. There was a mewing sound. A kitten had been shut in the cabin.
He'd got a hatch open. Don't be frightened. But the kitten wouldn't come out. Oh, I'll soon get you out of there. So Billy went into the cabin and started to look for the kitten. Puss, puss. Come on. Come on, puss. Come on, pussy. Come on. Sam! 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 Oh, Stan, where's Miss Woodstain? Number 12, Tackleways. Hey, have you seen Billy? No. Well, if you do, tell him I've taken Doggy with me and that he'll be for it when I get back. Right. Billy was still in the cabin of Carter's boat. Gold! I wonder if they're stolen. I must tell Anne. In the cottage, Carter told Clive what he wanted him to do. Stay here and wait for Miss Wood. Now keep your head. Everything will be all right. Well, where are you going? Fishing. Carter left the cottage and began going down the steps to his boat. At the same time, Anne was coming up the steps. Carter saw her and ran back to the cottage. That reporter's coming. Clive ran to the door, but Carter grabbed his arm. I want to find out what she knows. walked up to the door of Miss Wood's cottage. She rang the bell. Let her in, Clive. Look, is that boy with her? No. Why? Because he saw me in the empty house, that's why. You never told me that, Clive. Anne rang the bell again. Clive opened the door. Hello, Mr Manning. Welcome to see Miss Wood. Uh, come in. Suddenly, Anne saw Carter. Uh, this is Mr. Carter. He's also come to see Miss Wood. Um, this is Miss Mills. She's from the Hastings Times. I think we've met before. You're right. Now, where was it? Um, I, I, w I was just telling my uncle, Mr. Carter, about Miss Wood. Uh, she, she's gone to London. I see. Do you know when she's coming back? Um, well, well she, she should be gone a few days. And I did say I want to talk over old times with her. I haven't seen her for so long. Are you an archaeologist as well, Mr. Carter? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just down in Hastings to do some fishing. Do you do any fishing, Miss Mills? I thought reporters were always fishing. For something or other. Do you know where Miss Wood is? Um, you, you, you could try the Museum of Archaeology. Yes, I will. 
Um, I, uh, I have to telephone her soon uh, about the dig. Um, have you a message for her? I'll telephone her myself. Messages sometimes get lost, don't they, Mr. Carter? Carter knew which messages Zam was talking about, but he did not try to stop her when she left the cottage. Look, she knows. She knows everything. Shut up, Clive. You didn't help by calling me uncle. But you go to the police. How can she? She's got no proof. Anne ran down the steps. She found Billy by her car. I've been on Carter's boat and I found a box full of gold things in his cabin. Gold? Yes. Billy, the king's dragon could be an arm ring made of gold. What? Did you see anything like that on the boat? Anything like a dragon? No. I think Miss Wood found it when she was digging at battle. But I can't find her. Carter and Clive Manning are at her cottage. They say she's gone to London. But her bags are still there. Shouldn't we go to the police? I'm going to tell my editor everything. You keep an eye on the cottage. Telephone me if you see Miss Wood. If she goes anywhere, follow her. <laughs> Anne went off in her car. Billy ran up the steps to keep an eye on the cottage. I'm back. When Anne got back to the Hastings Times, she found a note on her desk. It was from me. I want to see you, Jay Dunbar. Anne came to see me. Dunbar. Where have you been? I've been finding out about the King's Dragon. I know what it is. Al, I don't want to know. I want you to be a good reporter. A reporter who reports back to her newspaper sometimes. A reporter who writes good copy. A reporter who lets her editor know where she is, not someone who runs all over Hastings looking for dragons. I know I should have phoned in, but I had to talk to Miss Wood. And then I couldn't find her. And if you have a story for me, go and write it down. Yes, Mr. Dunbar. And Anne. Yes? Don't go off like that again. No. I'm sorry. So Anne wrote down what she'd found out so far. to London, but her bags are still there. Has Miss Wood found the King's dragon? Where is she? <laughs> Where is the king's dragon? I read Anne's story. It won't do, Anne. There are very few facts. You have no proof. Now, I'll ask you a question. If Miss Wood did find this armory, why hasn't she told anyone? I don't know, but I think 
you think. You think this, you think that, but you have very few facts. I want proof. But I... If you come in here with Miss Wood and the King's Dragon, then you will have a story, and I'll print it. What are we going to do now, Uncle? We've got to find out if Miss Wood really has gone to London. <laughs> Come on, Clive. Let's go and make a few phone calls. Down in the old town, Clive and his uncle left the cottage and Billy saw them go. Clive was the man he'd seen in the empty house. He saw them walk away. So did Miss Wood. Billy was about to follow the men when he saw Miss Wood. But she did not go into her cottage. So Billy began to follow her. found a story about the dig-up battle in an old copy of the Hastings Times. Battle dig stops. Miss Wood, the archaeologist, said yesterday that nothing important had been found. She will begin digging at the castle very soon. This will not be her first dig in Hastings. Ten years ago, she worked with other archaeologists at the caves. The caves! No luck, Uncle. She isn't in London. And she must still be in Hastings. Look, Uncle, what are we going to do? Find Miss Wood. But where could she have hidden it? Where might an archaeologist hide something? The, the dig! And we'll chop a bit off the picture, okay? Oh. Great. And, Jim, check what's happening about page four. Okay. Yes. I think it could be at the caves. What? The King's Dragon. Miss Wood did some work at the caves ten years ago, so she must know them well. And I th Stop thinking! I don't want to tell you again, Miss Mills. Now stop all this talk about dragons and go and write your copy.
Anne was waiting for Billy to telephone about Miss Wood. Billy was still following Miss Wood. Keep looking. She's bound to turn up sooner or later. I'll get the boat ready for launching. But, Uncle... Do as you're told, Clive. Miss Wood was going to the caves. Billy had to telephone Anne. He ran as fast as he could to a telephone box. Clive Manning was there. Billy saw Clive coming towards him and ran away. Clive ran after Billy. the slip. One, please. One minute. When will the next party be going round? In about five minutes, madam, if you'll just wait over there. Thank you. Billy looked for another telephone box. At last he found one. I see you a moment, Anne. Oh. They'll ring back if it's important. I think you should check with the town clerk about that. Come on, come on. Otherwise, okay. Anne Mills? Huh? It's Billy. Miss Wood is still in Hastings. She's gone to the caves. Oh, and that man, you know, the one who was at the cottage with Mr. Carter. Clive Manning? Yes, he's the man I saw in the empty house. You know, the one that ran off when we found the messages. So Clive sent them? It looks like it. I'll see you at the caves. Billy? Billy! Billy left the telephone box and ran back to the caves. He did not know that Clive Manning had listened to everything. Right, ladies and gentlemen, the tour is about to start. You might all follow me this way. Billy followed Miss Wood into the caves.
Anne wanted to go to the caves to talk to Miss Wood. Is that all for me? She had a lot of work to do, but it would have to wait. She wrote a note. Gone. Two caves. And left it on her desk. Anne left in a hurry. She knew that Carter and Clive Manning would be looking for Miss Wood. Now the caves you're now standing in, ladies and gentlemen, extend far back into the hills. They're partly natural and partly man-made. You can see pickaxe marks on the wall. There's about a kilometer of tunnels down here. As Billy followed Miss Wood, he was thinking. He'd seen Miss Wood near the caves before. Sorry. There had been something gold in her bag. Go away. Go away. Never actually been proved. This way, ladies and gentlemen. And over here, we can see carvings of Winston Churchill and a famous local fisherman, Bunk Harvey. Now, he was uh, did a lot of charity work in his lifetime, and both men were made freemen of the town of Hastings. So just follow me up here, ladies and gentlemen. This way. Suddenly, Miss Wood began to hurry away. Billy followed her. into the cave she went, with Billy still behind her. the caves very well. to dig. Hey, hey, 
Hey, you! Billy, Billy West, what's going on? See you later. Billy went after Clive. He was going to stop him somehow. Miss Wood left the caves. She was very upset. The king's dragon had gone and there was nothing she could do. Then she saw Anne. Where's the king's dragon, Miss Wood? You know. Where is it? Clive has taken it. Where's Billy West? The boy? I don't know. I think he went after Clive. Come on, where are we going? Come on, hurry. Billy had followed Clive. He saw that he was going to the Hastings Motorboat Club. He knew that Carter's boat was there. No, I'm all right. Oh. Anne and Miss Wood got to the car. and started off for the old town. Why didn't you tell anyone about the King's Dragon? No one had ever found anything like it before. I had to be sure. It could have been a fake. Are you sure it isn't a fake? Yes. It's the best thing I've ever found. Then the messages began. Why didn't you go to the police about them? I was too frightened. That's why Clive sent them. Billy saw Clive go up to Carter's boat. It was time to tell the police. Hello, Billy boy. Why are you here? Hey, Mr. Charles. Just admiring my boat. Is that it? Clive! You slow, Mr. Carr. I've got to go. Go to the police. Is that what you were going to say? You said you'd be at the boat. Good thing I wasn't. I wanted to see if you were followed. And you were. We're the only ones here today. There's no use looking for help because there isn't any. Well, what are we going to do with him? We'll take him with us. If you're good, Billy boy, you'll come back with us. I'm going to be good. I'm sure Billy boy. Billy knew that he must do as he was told. The two men took him to the boat and shut him in the cabin. and find out what's happened to Billy.
out at sea, Billy started to look for something in the cabin. Something which he knew should be on every boat. His granddad, Stan West, was at sea near Carter's boat. He was on the King Harold putting out his nets. Billy found what he was looking for, a smoke flare. All boats carry flares. They can be let off if the boat is in danger. Let off the smoke flare. Up went the smoke. Lots of people in Hastings had seen the smoke flare. had seen the flare too. A small lifeboat soon put to sea. The sea took Billy away from the boat. We gotta go back for it! No. I said go back! Save the boy or this goes into the sea. Put it down, Clive. Go back for the boy! Never! You, Clive! I'm gonna get you for that! But Clive went over the side to save Billy. You stupid fool, Clive, you. I hope you drown! Carter started the boat and left them in the sea. On the King Harold, Stan saw Carter's motorboat coming towards him. No! No! You'll hit the nets! The nets there, the nets! Carter's boat hit Stan's nets. It stopped. Carter wasn't going anywhere for a long time. The lifeboat picked up Billy and Clive. Coast Guard Fairlight, this is fishing boat King Harry. I've got a very big fish in my net.
the lifeboat got back, Anne and Miss Wood saw that Billy was safe. King's dragon's gone. You are a lot more important than the king's dragon. I threw it into the sea. You did it to make Carter stop the boat. Uh, he went into the sea to save me. I want to tell the police everything. Granddad's got him. And his boat. He went into the nets. Wait until the police see the box full of gold things on his boat. By that time, I had got there. Well, Mr Dunbar, the King's dragon may be lost, but I think, I think I've got a story you'll print. had and it made banner headlines in the Hastings Times. King's Dragon lost at sea. Hastings lifeboat saves again. Archaeologist tells all. So you see news is all about people. Hastings Times. It's funny to think he's still down there. Yes, Billy, it is. Still, you never know. Maybe... Maybe what, Grandad? Maybe not forever. Maybe one day we'll fish it up again. Hope you enjoyed the story.